All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Capital Culture. I'm your host, Christopher Wheeler, and today we have a very unique guest. But before we jump into the guest, I got to thank our new sponsors, Snow Allure Premium Vodka, the queen of the north. So you're looking to get drunk on the weekend, have a few girls over, you know, get some Snow Allure. It'll help you out. With that being said, I wouldn't say that and not have some snow allure for you, so fuck. Let's go. I got a little gift bag for you here. You might find something hanging on that too. You know, a little, a little, a little one two combo when you get home. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. All right, all right. So, there you go, there you go. So, um, Thank you, Snow Allure. And with that being said, if you like the interviews, please make sure to like and su subscribe down below. You know, I'm grinding, you know, so that helps me out. With that being said, let's get back to the guest, Bert LePlug. Yes. How sir. are we doing today, brother? I'm blessed and highly favored always, yo. How are you? I'm doing good. Are we still with the, Nor with the girls in North York? <laughs> <laughs> no batchy today. So no batchy today? No, no, no. Fuck, man. So, kind of just got out of uh, COVID uh, mm -hmm. as, uh, as artists. So, how did you uh, navigate that? COVID was a blessing. Mm. It was the biggest blessing still, because if it wasn't for COVID, you wouldn't even see me here. Okay, well, go, yeah, on, go yeah. into depth a little so, bit. So, because of COVID, it allowed me to realize, like, my work slowed down. Mm -hmm. So, I work a nine to five job. Okay, not a shame to say that. No, that never, yo. Okay. That blessed me. His work is helping the dream, it funds the dream. Okay. And actually, thankful to my manager. Where's my manager? Oh, there he is. Yo, chill a D in the cut yeah, because yeah. it was him that took me out the matrix still. I was lost, yo. Okay. I was in my nine to five tripping the fuck out still. Not enjoying it? Not at all still. And he showed, he opened my eyes and made me realize, yo, like, there's a, there's a movement here mm -hmm. that I could capitalize on. So mm -hmm. when COVID struck, it was a perfect time for me to sit back, reflect on myself. My work slowed down. Mm -hmm. And that, that's it. We attacked. Okay, now I usually start the interview with the, this question, but I kind of want to know where Bert LePlug, where'd you get that name from and who is Bert LePlug? That is amazing still. Yeah, though. tell me, tell me, tell me. Bert LePlug originates from my actual name still. Mm -hmm. So if you see my writing credits, you'll know my name, but I don't feel like saying it right now. Okay, 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 <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Go, go look at the writing credits still, you'll see my name, but... um. But the people gave me Bert LePlug still. Mm -hmm. So I had two names. One was Batman Bert. That's mm -hmm. why when you hear me rap, I say the Batman. Bat -man. Yeah, <laughs> Batman. Um. And then my, my singing, when I sing, I say Bert LePlug. Mm. So I asked my, my fans at one point early in my career, 2018, 2019 actually, and I said, yo, what name do you guys want me to go by? Because I can't go by two names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people chose Bert LePlug, so, okay, you know? okay, so that's, okay. that's my name. Now, I kind of want to hone in on your <laughs> style because it's so unique. Mm -hmm. Before you even started the, or decided you want to get get to get into the rap game, mm -hmm. what made you decide to rap so uniquely and comical? Well, what made you, it's, it's very comical and it's full of culture. Like mm -hmm. you can tell it bleeds culture into the lyrics and you need to know one, two about Toronto to understand and get the comical value. So yeah. how do you even start it like that? It actually ties into the question you were asking, like who is Bert LePlug? Mm. So Bert LePlug is a mirror of what I, of the world. So I'm in Toronto, I'm in Scarborough. That's what I see. This is who I am. Battery, R.E. Saga. <laughs> this is what I know. I don't know anything else. And what I do is I just be truthful in every mm -hmm. time I make music. So basically okay. what the world is seeing is, is a reflection of what they created. So I kind of, this, this goes into the next question. How do you come up with the track names? But it, again, it's just you observing your neighborhood. And That's not, it. They're, they're, they're very unique. Like mm -hmm. I, like, mm -hmm. They're not unique. It's Toronto. You, you guys give it to me. <laughs> okay, 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 that's you what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I wake up and I get to see and experience this culture, and, mm -hmm. and because of that, I'm able to express it musically, you know? Mm -hmm. So IE is just what, what Toronto gave me. Saga mm -hmm. Man is what Saga gave me. You okay, know? So. okay, so let's dive into the actual content. What the hell is your what what kind of writing process do you have? Because, <laughs> how do you this even come up with this? Me, <laughs> Nah, it's all God still. I don't make the music. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you think I go and I just sit down and write? No, yeah, not so, at all. So not how do you do it? Is it freestyle? It literally is a freestyle still. It just comes out of me. I don't make it up. It just literally comes out. I can't tell you when a song is going to be made. It just gets made. You know? Interesting. Yeah, so, do you, so. so with you freestyling, does that like 
kind of like uh, hold you back in the sense because you, you don't have anything planned if you're just keeping freestyling, freestyling, you, you don't hit something that you think is good enough to put out. Mm -hmm. You just kind of got to wait until, you, okay, this is perfected in kind a of deal. In a sense, but one thing that is my key is just knowing myself. So basically, as long as I stay true to mm -hmm. myself and what my experiences are, there's always a song, you know? Mm -hmm. All I have to do is just observe and see, feel and gather. And then once I'm able to just write it all out, mm -hmm. you know, whether that's through a journal or something, mm -hmm. I'm learning myself, you know? So when now I hear a beat, now I could, I, it's easy for me to express what I know because mm -hmm. I practice every day. Okay, so you, you practice every day. So would you say you're in the studio? Like, how many how many days in the in the studio? Well, my week? studio is my crib, so. <laughs> okay, so you have a built-in studio? Basically, yeah. You and know? it gets the job done. That's it, you okay, know? I mean, okay. all the songs you guys are hearing is on the cheapest mic on Amazon. <laughs> I like the honesty, though. I love the honesty. $30 mic on Amazon. It doesn't take that much to just be creative. You just got to really be no, free. No, 100%. Now, mm -hmm. there's so much culture in your raps. I want to know what was uh, life like for you growing up in Scarborough. Did you grow up there? Yeah, I did still, man. That's a very interesting... Give so, us a little one, too. What was it like for... So for Scarborough, Lepard? for anyone that knows, is Scarborough. So, you know, you, you wake up and you have to deal with, you know, Scarborough. So okay. basketball is one thing. You know, my man over here, he said I'm a baller. So that, I used to play basketball growing up. Mm. But then as you grow older, then you start getting introduced to other things. So, you know, you know, break. So you, you kind of transition from basketball to music is what you're saying kind of deal? Not really, no. I mean, like, basketball was just a hobby. It's not something that, like, I... Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. no, you're you right. You were going no, to you're right. No, you're <laughs> right. Because if I look at the camera right now, I could say that every Scarborough man mm -hmm. at one point in their life thought they were going to the NBA. So <laughs> <laughs> every Scarborough man at least thought they were going to the NBA, you know? But I didn't grow, so... Mm -hmm. Um, now, any stories that really stand up, uh, stand out grow growing up in the in the in the hood or Scarborough, if you will. I can't tell you like specific stories, but I'll give you basically the rundown of a Scarborough lifestyle. Let's go. Just it, just in case there's people out there that don't know. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because I realize that my life is not not what everyone shares. You know, I guess this is it is a unique experience. So it starts off again basketball. Then breaking and enderies, mm -hmm. then carjackings, then tings, <laughs> then guns. Oh my God! Then, well, how old are we at this age? At when when we're at the guns? How I'll, old? I'll this is, that's a valid question. I'll summarize this still. I'll tell you exactly what age this is. <laughs> then fights, and then more tings, and that's just elementary school. <laughs> so that's just from grade. That's one to seven. One to seven, but that? I'm just talking about just for me when I first jumped into so it. So that's what you saw from one to six? Grades three to grade eight. Grade three to grade eight. That's all I experienced still. Holy smokes. And my whole goal was just for me not to be a victim of my circumstance. So Of your atmosphere kind exactly. of Exactly. So smart thing to say. Grade eight, as soon as I was realizing the path that I was going to go to, especially if I go to high school, mm. I said no. So I told my mom, send me to a private school. Send me Get to, the racks up. <laughs> yeah, I know, legit. So we couldn't even afford it's it. It's expensive. Mad expensive. Yeah. I think it was five bills a month. But that's what it took. That's what it took to. Yeah. But it, it, you're mature enough to understand your atmosphere was no good. A hundred percent, because I was dealing with drama every day with tings. Tings. And, and then in I, grade three to eight. Especially grade eight. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta bring that shit yeah, up. Yeah, because as a young guy, you're 13 in grade eight. Yeah, you're trying to get a pump pump. What are you talking about? Bro, I didn't lose. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 17. So hey, hearing man. this at 13 is crazy, bro. Listen, different star, atmospheres. Bro. I'm just yeah. That's that's real. This is a different atmosphere. What I was taught in grade seven, looking at the older man, is this Fuck. is life. This is what you're trying to do is get pum pum. It's nothing else. You know what I mean? This is what matters. Your grades don't matter. No one cares about that. Run to school and get as much things as you can. But you see how ignorant that sounds saying it out loud though, right? A hundred percent. First of all, it, it almost ruined my life still because the drama was ridiculous. Can we speak on that? Not really still. But all right, the, I'll the, be honest. I got to do it though. No, but I'll tell you I was stressed. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, when you go to school one day and you just see a whole group of things waiting for you just to cuss you off because of one thing you told one thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then they want to spread it because gossip travels faster than light. Do you, so. do you, do you, do you lie to your things a lot? No, right now I only tell the truth. I no, back in, it's great. I'm talking about three to, grade three back to eight. In, <laughs> you lying in <laughs> <laughs> You say anything. You to get a Anything to get in the end zone, you know? Nah, but 
No, nah, honestly, God was protecting me actually in those times still. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have to lie. You didn't have to do much still. Fair enough. You say God, God is protecting you, but let Always. me follow, follow up with this. When you were growing up, were you considered a troublemaker or a class clown? I say that because how comical your music are. Wow. Take someone to be... You know what I mean? That's I'm sure big... you got set out of the classroom a shit ton. Yeah, bro. Holy. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I was definitely a troublemaker. I was a fighter. I had an anger issue. So I would fight okay. everybody that would say anything wrong. You know, you talk the wrong thing, I would just fight you for no reason, you know? <laughs> no, it, it, it was a reason. Yeah, no, no, but no. But you had a I shorter, just shorter temper than Exactly. I couldn't control myself and I would justify me beating off someone for, mm -hmm. you know, something small. But definitely a class clown still. Guy got yeah. failed every class because of it. Okay, now I want to kind of hone in back into the music. Do you remember the day you decided to start making music? Like the day itself? What who, who what was the determining factor to say, fuck it, I'm gonna do it? What what was it hmm. about that day? Jeez, man. You know, I was just thinking, yo, deeply about my life actually coming into this interview still. And I'm just like, yo, when did I really start making music still? I, it's very weird because I think it was my whole life now that I really think about it. So you've been recording. When was your first re recorded track? So my first recorded track was probably 2017. 2017 was probably when I was thinking about it because I had someone, my boy Pindab, shout out to the guy. Okay. He was encouraging me. He saw my talent and he was pushing me. But my whole life I've been making music now when I think about it. Now you're, see, I, I, we started the interview and I was like, uh, do you plan to stay in the comical rap lane? Did you intend to, to be comical rap or is this is just literally what you say? And mm. you, you plan to make adjustments to try and be taken a little bit more seriously. I'm just being very frank. From yeah, no, because it's real still. No, I don't plan to stay in the comical rap at all because that's not Burt LaPlug. Burt La, that's just one aspect of Burt LaPlug. Yeah, okay. Sure. okay. But it's definitely not me of who I am and what the world and what how I see it. Because mm -hmm. the world is not always fun. Sometimes the world is serious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the reason why I started was definitely because, yo, I see, I seen the need. I didn't realize it until my manager showed it to me, but I seen the need. You mean there's a demand for your, your style of music? What do you mean by need? Just to elaborate on Look that. Look at what we are listening to now. What is fun? <laughs> what it, can I actually really say, man, this is fun and not someone yeah. dying yeah. on oh. a track? Okay, you know I, I mean? understand what you're saying. Yes, so yes, I'm yes, saying yes. So I'm saying like, yo, we need something that's just different that could, we could turn up to without... Well, some, most, some people would be like, let's just switch the genre. Do you know like, what I mean? Well, I just mean like, because like... The, the rap genre is predominantly uh, spin, Violent. spin the block. You know, yeah. Grr, grr, grr. yeah. So yeah. you're saying your manager's like, you're going to do rap but have a comical spin on it, and that's going to get you your first initial buzz? Is that kind of your approach? No, no, no. Like, this started way before I met my manager still. I was just doing it just because Got you. for fun. Yeah. Understandable. I was, yeah, I was just, I just seen the need. Like, yo, I want to turn up. Mm. I want to have fun. I don't like what I'm listening to right now. You know what I mean? So like, so let me just I made, hold on. Just yeah, go, go, go. I made the music for me. This music is for me. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. you're hearing right now is because I listen to this music on my ones to enjoy. You know so when you mean? make music, you're not concerned about the I don't demographic. Do, I don't seek validation from no one. No. Not one person. Ever so you in my life. you decide when you want to make the music. Yes. So let me. This is on third or fourth uh, page. You decide to remix over the top. Why? It's very. I, I'm asking that That's with a that good tone. Question, bro. It's not. It's not. It's no. not your style. You know, and it, that beat was hard for you. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. let me just. You know. To be honest. Yo, that's a great question. All right, yeah, I'm really giving you the fucking you. flowers. Throw them on the yo, stage. Yo. Let's go. There's yeah. a couple people yo, in the room. Yo, Not yo, too many, yo. but... I really rate you for that question, so... Fuck. There's at least a seven or eight, maybe ten. A couple things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny, yo. This guy's killing me. Uh, no, so, but to answer your question... It was so right, right. Yeah. Like, it wasn't your style. I was like, yeah. any, it didn't get good numbers. Yeah. I mean, well, honest. I, maybe well, you say the You will say it didn't get good numbers, but TikTok has 40,000 Okay. Views. Okay. So, you know? Okay, fair enough, fair so, enough. But YouTube is where the monetization is done, you know? You're right. 681 views. But TikTok is where everyone's blowing up now. So, if you're not on that, you're My actually behind. My manager said, that's right. So, you're obviously proving me wrong there. <laughs> Yo, just one thing I'll say as this interview continues. God, yeah. is, God is real. So, at the end of the day, it's like, yo, knowledge, yeah. okay. knowledge is power. So, just always just know, right? And the reason why I did over the top is because I can do it. That's the reason why I did it. I heard the beat. You can and I do it or you decided to do it? No, I can do it. Still, I heard the beat and I said I can do it. You okay, know? okay. Um, would that, you, can, compared to your uh, success-wise, do you think it was a successful track? First of all, 
<laughs> I like that response. <laughs> Taking what I said on the track. <laughs> like I said, I got things lined up like parade. <laughs> I send her back if she go if she has to bathe. You knew you're hot. You should have been in the shade. <laughs> Just taking what I'm saying. Yo, the first rapper to spit bars on the because show. Because people are not listening to what I'm saying, so I'm just saying it for real. Like, mm. you're not taking that in. Ask a rapper to spit their bars. They won't. They're scared. You are not. You're pretty confident. I can tell the way you... Because God is real, fam. So let me, let me, I want to hone in on this shit. Because yeah. in, when you, you, at the beginning, you said you're a troublemaker, you're kind of lost at the be. Mm -hmm. Did God save you? Did religion save you throughout your life? No, 100%. Still, I'm not going to front. If it wasn't for my auntie and my mom... Mm -hmm. And threw me on stage and told me to preach in front of 500 people. And I told them straight up, no. I said, no. And they said, yo, you can do it. They believe in me. No way. I said, yo, if you believe in me, then I'll believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And I went up there. This was 13 years old, actually, coming out of all this That was trouble. grade eight, all the things. You just exactly. finished with all the things. I wrote my own sermon, too. No one wrote that because all these kids have to get it written up for them. And I said, nah, yo, I could do this, yo. Bert so, LePlug has got this. That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, so that's it. And once I started building a relationship with God, then I went to, so when I was saying high school, I went mm. to a private school, which is a Christian school. And I was there. I what was the a, demographic like there? All black, probably a little bit of Filipino. Shout out to all my Filipinos. You already know, yo, that's my people. And, um... And just one white person. Just one white person. Just yeah. one. What was, what was the white person's name? Todd? No, I ain't even saying that. It's a girl still. <laughs> oh, Becky. No, no, no. No, but it was the best school experience I ever had in my life. Everyone, and that saved your life. Oh, my God. Everyone singing gospel songs. I had nothing to worry about. I'm not worrying about no one shooting up the place. No one trying to rob <laughs> it's me. It's just so outlandish to hear, you know? Like, yeah, no. I didn't have to worry about Niners. No one's trying to check me what's as a, a Niner. niner? Oh, shoot. You're not really from Toronto, eh? Nah, you can tell my voice. Yeah, yo. yeah. I'm nah, not nah. Gonna hide it, <laughs> hey, man, do you like it? <laughs> That's killing me. Yo, Niners is when you're in grade nine, yo. You get checked for being in, in grade oh, nine. Oh, you mean hazing? In a sense, That's yeah. white people call it. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> hazing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man. They call it Niners here still. Like, you really get just jacked. You what happened robbed. to you? Nothing, because I went to... Oh, you, you, you saw that in eight, you're like... <laughs> they were good. I don't think they would have done anything to me because I'm protected, you know? God watches over me. But at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, I chose not to go down that path for a reason. Because, again, if I went to a public Older school... Older brothers? No, I just had a wise... I had just had all the mans in my block doing the bad things, so I get to see the contrast. Why would I follow that, you know? And they're not encouraging me to do it. I agree with you. So that's, yeah. that's good of them. Yeah, yeah. Usually some of them, they, they, they suck in the younger youth. That's how they get them. Yeah, well, no, these guys are my age. Oh. Yeah, so I get to now make my own decisions, you know? They're not trying to... I don't, I'm not looking up to them as these guys are my elders, you know? These guys are my age doing the worst shit because their elders are doing the worst shit. So, you know? Fuck. But they're my homies still. Shout out to the boys. The boy them. All right. Fair, yeah. fair, fair, fair. Um, okay, I want to circle back to... You just had your first show in December. In November. No no November, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. And in November? Yeah, on a Tuesday, Tuesday, yo. What am I thinking on Tuesday, dog? You crazy. Okay, so yeah. let's let's talk about how how did that go? Oh, amazing. First of all, sold out. Shout out to Chilla D, bro. Let, yo, if, if you call... Shout out to Chilla D. Look at Chilla D. That is a goat. Live bro. audience. Yeah. We're moving up, you yeah, know? Yeah, no, <laughs> This guy is a goat still. He set up the show. I mean, first we tried to do another show. It got shut down by the police. Why is that? Your music is not anywhere near like a, like the, the normal. I'll, I'll tell you one reason. I mean, I just think it wasn't the right time. And that, that was really, you know what I mean? Because honestly, people perform there all the time where we were going to perform. You can't say the venue? I guess not. It wasn't a venue. It was outside. Just in a park? In a park. You <laughs> that's, know what I mean? That's hard. That's hard. So that's what I'm saying. Like, for them to come in, and before we even set up the speakers... Did you we... have permits? I'm just being no, devil's we, advocate. And then, that, and then that's the other part, too. We, didn't ever have a, we never had a permit. So. You did, this was in Scarborough? No, no, downtown. Oh, I yeah, so... Okay. You know what I mean? But people performed there all, all the time. <laughs> yeah, you heard it. That was good, eh? All right, everyone got that joke. <laughs> don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. <laughs> but yeah, so so we came and bounced back still, you know. It wasn't the right time and then, mm -hmm. but definitely that, that uh, November 30th was the right time still. Sold out show, and from beginning to end, everyone was turned. What was something uh, you... Now, we'll, we'll, we'll do this question, and then we'll, we'll interject for a little break. I got mm -hmm. a big interview for you. But what's something that came out of uh, 
you, that show that you didn't expect or like what what's something that was like wow i needed to make an adjustment i didn't feel like uh, performing live would be like that kind of deal because it was your first live performance if i'm not wrong yeah it was but like it wasn't the first time i would ever been on stage so for me it's like it's nothing for me like that was nothing that's baby food actually but the biggest thing i took from that was the meet and greet at the end. You I didn't met your fans? Oh my God, that was amazing. Yo, I didn't even knew you I didn't know, You that. didn't know how, that's it's Cause surreal. when I'm on the stage, I zone out. So I'm lost in the sauce. So everyone's turning up and I don't even know what's actually happening. I'm just performing my track, giving my heart out. Okay. And so now I have my shirt off, I'm drenched in sweat, I'm upstairs and I can't go outside cause it's freezing cold. You had your shirt off for half the concert, if yeah, I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shirt yeah. off you, bird, that's what But that's say, what yeah. I mean, um, uh, you have such high uh, energy performance. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a fact I heard about you. You actually don't like coffee? Nah, I don't drink coffee. Yeah, you don't drink coffee. I, don't, I can't say I don't like it because I never had it. Yeah, so you don't drink coffee, but nah. you're so high energy. Yeah, God is real still, so. How <laughs> <laughs> the fuck did those two? God is real. God's coffee coming soon. <laughs> that's actually real still. That's Holy dope. smokes, bro. God yeah, is real, bro. God is real Do you want to bless me? <laughs> oh, my God. You're already God. blessed, bro. So, I was zoned out performing. I need, I didn't realize what happened at the show. So it wasn't until I got upstairs, couldn't leave the outside because it's cold. My shirt's off. I had to put on my shirt. Everyone's walking upstairs now. And I get to now see everyone's face and they're telling me, yo, they had the most fun in their life. Some That's people crazy. I didn't have so much fun because of COVID. So this was the first time right. since COVID. And it's just like amazing. I left a lasting impression on them mm. and them telling me left a lasting impression on me. That was the biggest thing I could ever ask for. Greatest mm. gift I could ever ask for. All right, this is a great question. What do you think Bert LaPlug needs, and I kind of look at your manager too, but you don't have to shout out. Mm -hmm. What do you think Bert LaPlug needs to take you to the next level? Mm. What are you missing? What are you lacking? To be honest, what we're going to drop next may be it still. Give us a little insight. Come on, give me a one-two for the interview. A <laughs> one-two yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. Where's the Nike tech? You already know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say, yo. Just a little hint still. I already posted a snippet on my... On my story. Do we have an idea of when uh, you, this piece of content is going to come out? I want to play for you guys um, in intermission. How about that? Okay, yeah, okay. Why not? Cameras Might can well. go off, you know? Yeah, yeah, Maybe exactly. we'll leave a hot mic on, you know? Okay, so, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Black, black me nah, they already heard the snippet, but to be honest, is me taking it really seriously, but not music myself. Yeah. You see, yeah, but you, your whole demeanor right now, like, you seem like a very, you, you are, you, you, you hold yourself with... Uh, a, a certain stature. I have to. Did it not used to be like this? And that's why you're so in. You, you embellished uh, uh, sitting straight, talking properly. Is that you weren't always like this? No, I was always like this, but I realized that um, balance is key. I can't be moderation. A yeah, I can't be a joke always, you know, mm -hmm. or else no one would take me seriously. No yeah. one. I so, feel you. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. Okay. 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 Um, up until this point. What's been your favorite body of work? Ooh, jeez, man. That's a good Can question. Can I guess? And then you... Tell me, yeah, yo. SEC or AE? Jeez. SEC or AE. Those are your songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm Batchy, Batchy, yeah. too. Batchy, Batchy was my first introduction to you. Ah, that's the I was the like, song. yo, what the... I got the white yeah. girls... Yo, yo. <laughs> that's jokes, though. To be honest, to be honest, it's literally like, I actually love the moss, still, but... If I can't say my favorite song right now, <laughs> no one has heard. <laughs> okay, so it's yet yeah. to be dropped. Actually, it could be What's hidden. What's it called? It could be hidden. It could be somewhere that you just have you to find. You doing that secret file stuff on YouTube? Like, nah, that nah. Killy does? Yo, he, okay, okay, nah, that's an interesting one. Not word, YouTube, nothing. probably other platforms, too. But it's called Fear God. Fear God. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. God, God is good. <laughs> God is good. All the time, my brother. All the time, still. Let's focus on uh, the, the latter half of the interview. Now I have three final questions before we jump into a little game, you know? Mm -hmm. So my first uh, question to you is, what do you think your friends and family would like to see us talk about before the interview is over today? Mm. God? No, nah, to be honest, they don't really care still. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, they don't care about my music career. They care about me, you know? So mm -hmm. they, they don't really care. So let me restructure the question. Why should yeah. your fans care about your music in 2022? In 2022? Why should my fans care about my music? To be honest, your music, my music. Yeah. Listen, I'll be honest with you. It's them that brought me back. I retired. You know, you retired. I wasn't re wanting to do music. I told God. I said, I'm done. I quit. I finished. I'm done. You know, 2019. I retired. Why? 
because I said I'm finished. Like you, you know, I made S- I dropped STC 2019, and I just said, yo, this is not for me because you didn't see success. I, it's you're part of it. Yeah, you're let's, right, let's yo. Be honest, no, you're yo. right. You're right. Looking, you have talent, but the numbers aren't really uh, sure. backing it up. Yeah, I mean, let's be frank. I, I think you have great talent, or else I wouldn't have you on the show. That's respect, bro. No, I appreciate no, I'm not that. Still, lie, you know. Yeah. But where Where do you feel? Like to to bring you up, like what do you think you need to do? Like in, in, to be in, honest, my vision was just blurred at that mm-hmm. time still, because what I thought was success was big numbers, but I realized success is one person. Mm-hmm. Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> Someone's <laughs> not making a hit. <laughs> Someone is not making a hit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the studio. Is the studio here? <laughs> This guy, this guy's so not making a hit right now. Someone, you know what's real? Someone is not making a it's hit. It's actually bro. Joe. Holy smokes, That's bro! Crazy. That was that. My ears are bleeding, bro. That was real, so. uh, but yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Just to finish what I was saying, yeah. I realized it's really that one person still like. For me, like to just have one fan or one person really just tell me straight well, you up. Ha- um, you go ahead. I, I, oh, I, sorry. This, this leads into my next question. Okay. Go ahead. Go. You can finish. My, well, my yeah, bad here. Because as I was saying, I retired. So like to have people come up to me and say, "Bro, what are you doing?" You know what I mean? Like do music. We don't tell people to do music. We usually tell our friends to stop doing music. <laughs> But this person who I had no ties to and no obligation to even listen to, I don't know them from jump, has me by the neck telling me, yo, what are you doing? Your music is fire. Why aren't you pursuing this? Mm. And at that same time, my manager came to me and said, yo, this is an opportunity I want to present to you. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go back. And when I go back, it's over. Mm. Now, you probably, in, in the sense, someone would look at your profile and they notice that, the biggest artist in the world is following you. <laughs> Isn't funny. that fucking enough to keep going? When did that happen? That happened when I came back after my retirement and me and my manager. Or before or after STC? So me and my manager locked in and we said we're going to do this for real. Yeah. So we dropped STC first. It got some traction. You know, Six Buzz picked it up, all that stuff. And then we dropped Winnie Harlow, I believe, was the second song we dropped. Okay. Yo, is that right? Was it Rennie Harlow the second? And it's right after Rennie Harlow dropped, I got a message from from Trilla. He goes, "Yo, bro, send me the screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> send me the screenshot." But you know That's what I mean, like crazy. Yo, guys, good all the time. Still, I'm not gonna lie. Yo, guys, good all the time. So, what's going through your head? When that happens, um, uh, yo, yo, let me be as real as possible. Still, whoa, that's the guy. boy. Champagne poppy. This <laughs> guy's <laughs> champagne poppy. Yo, listen, let me be as real as possible. He followed me before I had 1,000 followers on Instagram. That's when how- was that in terms of your music, though? STC? Where, like, where, how many followers do you have when you get that follow? I probably have like 800 followers, <sighs> 900 followers still. Yeah, that, at this time when he, when he follows me still. Mm. So he's following me before I have a thousand. Listen, there's people who I love dearly and who love me dearly that follow me on my accounts that don't even follow me. Like people I know in real life, you know what I mean? Mm. That don't follow me, don't support my, yeah, 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 don't support yeah. me like that. And they but, wave to you when they say You, see you know it. what I mean? Yeah. They're just like, yeah, we know, we know Bert, you know what I mean? But yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. really F with my music. But mm. this guy followed me way before I had even a thousand followers. Was so. there a conversation there? Uh, no conversation initially, no, but you know, all of our conversations have been short and sweet. So there has been conversation. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair mm. enough. Um, last question before we get into the game, what can your fans expect this year from you? Tapes, um, projects, tours, shows. What are you thinking? Yeah. There. Oh, I got to take off my glasses for Oof. this, eh, man? Cause I really appreciate my fans. Every single person that bounced my music, every person that stayed when I retired the first time and I only had 500 followers and you guys still followed me, even though I retired for a whole year, this is for you still. It's takeover time. It's over now. You already know what time it is. That was fucking hard. Did you, that was hard. And I didn't write that, no. I know Are you're you going to sure? ask me that. Did you write that? Never write anything. Bro, bro. I saw you in the bathroom writing that script. Right <laughs> yeah, I didn't even use the watch. <laughs> funny, bro. Uh, who? Uh, me or you? You, bro. Nah, come yeah. on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you died in the whole interview. Bro. All right, um, I'll give you the camera there. If you want to say one <laughs> final message to your fans, then yes. we're going to wrap up. Yo, to everyone that's watching right now, I love you. Your love. Stay blessed always, yo. It's Bert LaPlug. You already know what time it is all right with that being said and shout out to chris reeler bro this guy is a real guy bro he's a g still respect to him and his whole team yo thank you guys still 
But I appreciate that. You're the first guy I got on the show and said that, so I, I appreciate that. So let me just say my little spiel here. Like, subscribe, Bert LaPlug. He's got a lot of shit coming in 2022. He did his first show in November, and it was live. So if you see a show pop up, make sure to attend. There might be two girls from North York. You know, so well, <laughs> get your tickets because they may so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So Christopher Wheeler, Bert LaPlug signing off. Brrr.